Hi everyone and happy Wednesday! I'm feeling like playing with texture again so I'll be using some watercolor ground to create a textured watercolor and mixed media painting. I've had this quarter inch wide artist tape uh, for quite some time and I haven't had really a chance or any ideas on how to use it up until now. So I am going to cover certain areas of my paper and I will use it sort of, well not sort of, exactly as a way to mask these areas so that I can apply my watercolor ground and um, create some geometric lines I guess in my painting. It's not going to be a geometric painting per se. Um, but I want to have some areas that are masked and then some other areas that have texture and so I'm going to use the paint to, sorry, the tape to kind of sculpt my painting if you will. It's, <laughs> it sounds weird for me to say sculpting my painting but <laughs> since I want to have some areas of texture and some other areas where there is no texture, I'm going to use the tape to mask the areas that I want to leave as plain watercolor paper. I just put a glob of watercolor ground on my palette paper and I'm going to use a palette knife to apply the ground to those areas that um, where I want to create some texture and I'm going to do my best um, to not be too precise about it. In fact when I'm working like this I want to make sure that the ground doesn't cover all the areas because when the ground is applied in certain areas and it's not applied evenly over the surface of the paper it makes for more interesting textures. In this hot summer weather, the watercolor ground tends to dry relatively quickly. Still, I do love to make sure that I allow plenty of time between letting the watercolor ground dry and starting to apply my paint. So I'm applying, I'm continuing to apply more watercolor ground because I want to keep building my textures. And once I'm done with this, I will leave my paper aside for a while and let it dry and I'll only come back to it to start painting once the paper has dried flat. Thank you. 
of course, all kinds of things we can use around our house that can help us create textures in our paintings. All we need is to use a little bit of imagination and um, make the tools that we have available to us work. Up until now, I've been really just focusing on building up layers of texture and so it's really hard to see what it is that's happening. I hope that if you're watching this on your TV screen in, in particular that it'll be easier for you to see. But once I'm done applying this little layer of texture, I'm going to let the piece completely dry and then I'm going to start to add some color. I'm not 100% sure how to start. The most important thing to do is to just start and then I'll figure out the rest as I go along. So as I was saying, I'm not sure where to go so I need to just get going with anything and so I'll apply a very light wash of color over the surface. That will really help to bring out the textures and help me see what's going on on my paper um, in more detail and in doing that it also helps to guide me to what I'll end up doing next but because this is only a first layer of uh, color and not necessarily the color I want to leave in the background in the end I it's really important for me to make sure here that I'm applying a very light wash of this color so that the other colors I apply on top of it will have more room to shine through Because I wanted to make sure that initial layer of color didn't bleed into the other colors I'm about to add, I had to let the paper dry before starting to apply the colors I actually want to end up in my painting.
Even at this stage of the painting process, I'm not 100% sure of the color palette I want to use to complete this painting, and so I'm adding color, but I'm doing so in light washes, and as I keep building up my layers of color, if along the way I decide that I would prefer for my color scheme to change, I can do so without affecting the integrity of the entire piece because the layers underneath are going to be a lot lighter. Now already in adding this um, green gold, I'm not liking what I'm seeing, um, mostly because everything is too yellow in my painting right now. So I've decided to come in with some turquoise and change some of the sections in the painting so that they can contrast with the other colors that I want to keep. I'm definitely liking that turquoise next to the quinacridone deep gold a lot more but I do like that green gold and I want to add a little bit more of it into the painting and since it's not going to be right next to the other yellowish um, color in the painting it's not going to look as um, it's going to just look better <laughs> let me just put it that way because yellow tinges next to each other, I mean, I, I don't want to create a painting that's completely yellow. So I want to get some good contrast going. And so it's important for me to put colors that um, can, can play well together and offer good complement to each other.
Slowly but surely, I'm working on building my different layers of color. And as I'm doing this, this also helps to brighten and intensify the color pigment on my paper, which will make for a much brighter painting in the end. All in all, this painting process um, took me quite a few hours and I had a lot, I, uh, many hours of video footage to edit in order to complete this video. I didn't want this video to be too long for you all and so I have had to do quite a bit of cutting but I'm hoping that I'm still keeping a lot of um, what's essential in my video. And at some point, I have another video that will be coming out, and um, this will be my first class on my website. I can't make any promises as to when this will happen. Um, the video footage is shot, the painting is made, and I'm really excited about it. Um, but believe it or not, <laughs> I've got another move in my future. And so with this, um, it means that I have to um, put certain things on hold. C'est la vie. Uh, I'm trying to just kind of go with the flow and um, you know that's life. Things change and it's it's good to be able to plan and I think a certain amount of planning is always good but it's also very 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 important in life to be flexible because Things don't always happen the way we hope they will happen or we hope they will be. So um, even though we really love Brewer, it's a really lovely community, uh, we pretty much every single day are driving to the forest to spend time in the forest because we are rural living people. <laughs> we love to be outdoors and so we have found it a bit, um, not challenging, but just not exactly what we were hoping to get when we made our move and so we have luckily and very thankfully found a house that will afford us a chance to live in an area that is more wooded and that's very close to the trails we love to hike and bike and cross-country ski on and um, so that is coming up in our very near future. So I won't lie, <laughs> I'm feeling a little stressed, um, but I will make it happen one day at a time, one minute at a time. I'll break it down in whatever manageable way I, may, I can make it happen. And so I know I've been talking for quite a long time now about having my website up, up and running, and it basically is pretty much ready. I just... Uh, have I want to post an online class on my website and that's kind of been my goal for this website and so maybe I should just make it go live anyway and leave the class for later but I when I get my head to doing something I kind of feel like that's how I want to make things happen and since I'm going to be moving anyway I don't know if now is the right time for me to be managing a website on top of everything else so I'm just choosing to be flexible, to be open, and to allow what needs to happen to happen. And so that just means that for now I need to postpone what I had planned and that when the timing is right and the timing is better, things will all fall into place. So as I've been working on building my layers of color and intensifying my colors to make them more vibrant, I've also been paying close attention to the different textures that are in my painting and I'm trying to add some dark value contrast in those areas so that I can make those textures stand out a little bit more and also add more contrast to my painting. Uh, 
as I've mentioned on many, many, many occasions in my videos, I am always experimenting and trying things as I go along. My painting process is very intuitive and that means that I get an intuitive hit to do something and I just simply I try it. And sometimes it works in a way that I really like it. And when I realize after having done it that I'm not 100% sure about it, then I remind myself that that can always be changed. So in this instance here, I wanted to make those little areas of texture stand out a little bit more. And I thought maybe if I add a little bit of turquoise to this area and a little bit of magenta to the other um, shapes that are below it, that it would help. But I do think it makes those shapes too dark. And so what I would prefer to do is lighten those up and I'll so I'll just wait until they dry and I will do something different. And that's the beauty of the painting process. Any into any well intuitive painting in particular, but any painting process when we allow for flexibility and space to do or make the changes we want to make in our painting and we realize at the same time that at the same time that a painting process is not done until we've decided it's complete then we give ourselves room to make all the changes we want to make to try different things in our painting process and to experiment and honestly I think there's no better way for me to paint and to learn as I'm going along than to do that um, if I am too attached to anything that I do in a painting or if I get disappointed by something after laying down the paint on the paper and I decide to give up then the painting will never change. But when I allow myself to be flexible to also experiment and try different things I discover what it is I like and I also discover what I don't like so much. And it's, this helps me work on developing my own style of painting and so it's good to have that flexibility and I think that applies not only to the painting process but it also applies to life in general. That said I've decided to add some of this teal color and I'm already loving how this looks way more because it, it is contrasting a little bit more with the background than it was before and I think that was an important step for me to take.
it's time for me to play with my metallic paints and add a little bit of shimmer to this painting and by doing so this is also going to add some value contrast i'm going to be working with two uh, pigments in particular one is called green gold it's a different type of green gold of course than the one i applied earlier this one is a shimmery um, pigment and i really like it and the other one i'll be working with also is 24 karat murk gold a color that i really like both are from are from csi art gallery and i have to say i really love these little palettes they are relatively inexpensive and I love how they look and how shimmery they are on my paintings. I'm sure you've noticed that I'm working with two brushes here. Surprise. <laughs> uh, I am applying the pigment with my fine tip uh, liner and then I'm coming in with a dry filbert brush and I'm basically rubbing the paint so that it it doesn't have a very harsh line and it helps to spread the pigment a tiny bit. Because the brush is dry and not wet, it doesn't completely, um, it's like dry brushing. It's the same kind of technique that you may have heard of that um, is often done with acrylic paints. And this is sort of my way of spreading the paint. I have done it before using my finger um, or wearing a latex glove and just you know spreading it with my finger but I have the brushes and why not try and do that and I actually am liking how this is working out and then I can just you know dip my brush in water and I can clean it on my paper towel and uh, I didn't need to use a glove so I'm kind of liking that this 24 karat murk gold is going to add some light value contrast to my painting and my focal area and once i'm done adding it i believe i will be ready to call this painting done it's interesting how a product that i had not used very much in the past has almost fast become one of my favorite products to use and what I'm talking about here, of course, is the watercolor ground. I love texture and it's so much fun to be able to use this watercolor ground to create texture in my painting. Let's move in closer to have a look at some of the details in this painting. I really like everything about this painting. I like how the textures make the colors um, take on different values. I also love how the colors work together and I love how the metallic paint helps to make those textures pop. All in all, it was a very satisfying project to create, and I hope you're feeling inspired to create something similar as well. Thank you again so much for making the time to join me on my creative journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating.